This video is a tutorial sheet. So the purpose of this video is to give students some questions they can try by themselves. And the key thing is you should pause the video and attempt the questions or you know have a proper go yourself before you look at the answers provided. We're going to assume that you're familiar with the previous eight videos in this series on complex numbers. First question then. And again, a reminder, once you've read the question, pause the video before you look at the solution I'm going to provide. So you should pause now. The aim here is to express the following complex numbers in modulus argument and complex exponential form. So I'm going to start with w. Now hopefully it's obvious to you that the modulus of w equals 1. Because if you square the root 3 over 2 and add it to the square of a half, you're going to get 1. Now if I sketch this as a complex number, I'll do a little sketch down here so you can see what w looks like. What you'll notice is the real part is slightly bigger than the imaginary part, and it's in quadrant 4. And this is these are classic numbers, root 3 over 2 and a half. You should know by inspection that that angle in there is 30 degrees. And therefore, w is going to be 1 arg minus 30. Now, if I put it in exponential form, you're simply going to write w equals e to the i. And there's a pi by 6, because that's 30 degrees in radians. But clearly, I also need a minus sign, so it's e to the minus i, pi by 6. So that's w. What about x? Well, x, you can see, is 2 plus 2i. Now, I've not given myself quite enough space up here, but clearly up there, it's up there. And you can tell, because the real and imaginary parts are the same, that the angle you're talking about will be 45 degrees. It also should be obvious that the distance from the origin is 2 root 2, direct from Pythagoras. And therefore, I can write x equals 2 root 2 arg 45, or if I use the exponential form, I can write 2 root 2 e to the i pi by 4. Clearly, in the exponential form, you must express the angle in radians. What about the last one? Now, the last one's not going to fit in my graph because the scale's a bit bigger, so I'll cheat slightly. But you'll notice I've got minus 4 over root 3 and minus 4i, and therefore the imaginary bit is the largest in magnitude, but they're both negative. So what we've got is we've got a complex number, which is down here somewhere. Now again, you'll notice that this ratio between the real and imaginary part of root 3 tells you that the angle in there has to be 60 degrees. That's a classic sort of numbers that everybody should know. Also, what you can see is the modulus of y is going to be the square root of 16 over 3 plus 16, which gives you the square root of 16 times the square root of 4 over 3, which is going to give you 8 over root 3. So, finally, we need to get this angle and we need to represent it relative to the positive real axis. So if I mark the angle in there, you'll see it's minus 120 degrees. So what you've got, therefore, is y equals 8 over root 3, arg minus 120, or, if I use the exponential form, 8 over root 3 into e to the minus i times 2 pi by 3. Next question, then. In this question, you'll see we've used the same complex numbers as we had on the previous page, just for convenience. But now we're asking you to do some multiplication and division. So again, now is the time to pause and try this by yourself before we go through the solutions. First, then, x, y. And you can see we've already got the modulus argument form. And when you do a multiplication, we've always said it's easiest in modulus argument form. So I can write by inspection, I'm going to get 2 root 2 times 8 over root 3. That's going to be the new modulus. And the argument will simply be 45 minus 
120. Now, to be honest, there's not much credit for um, multiplying that out, but if you really want to, you'll see you get 16 root 2 over root 3, and the argument is going to be minus 75. What about the next one, then? z equals w cubed x over y. So again, you remember from the earlier video that you can just write this result down by inspection. So w cubed, the modulus will be 1 cubed. x, the modulus is 2 root 2. And we're dividing by y, so we divide by the modulus of y. So we're dividing by 8 and multiplying by root 3. So there's the modulus of z. What about the phase? Well, for the phase, we get the phase of w. That's minus 30. We get three. Oh, sorry, 3 times the phase of w. I'm uh, being a bit clumsy there. Let's just rub that out. So you get 3 times the phase of w, because it's w cubed. So that's minus 90. You add the phase of x, so that's plus 45. And then you subtract the phase of y, because it's in the denominator. And so you're going to end up with plus 120. Now, I'm not going to bother simplifying all this out, because that's rather boring algebra that any of you can do by yourself. <coughs> and the final one, we've got z equals y to the 5, x squared over w to the 4. So again, you'll remember that we simply write things down as they come. The modulus of y is 8 over root 3, and that's to the power 5. So I've got 8 over root 3 to the power 5. The modulus of x is 2 root 2, and that's squared. So I simply write 2 root 2 squared. We've divided by w. The modulus of w is 1, so we're dividing by 1 to the power 4. So there's the modulus of the result. And again, I'm not going to bother multiplying it out longhand, because that's rather tedious, and you can do that very easily. What about the phase? Well, I get 5 lots of the phase of y. The phase of y is minus 120, so 5 lots of that is minus 600. I get 2 lots of the phase of x, so that's plus 90. And I subtract 4 lots of w, so that's going to be plus 120. And again, I'll let you add those together to simplify, because that's easy to do. Next question, then. We want you to solve for the roots of the following problems. So you want the cube root of minus 1, the square root of 4i, and the fifth roots of 243 times 1 plus i over root 2. So as before, now is the time to pause. Try these by yourselves before you look at the solutions that I provide. First then, the cube root of minus 1. And this is a classic problem that comes up in control theory quite often, especially in root loci. So we want to solve w equals the cube root of minus 1. And you remember, the way we said we'd solve this is essentially by cubing both sides. So saying, let's try and solve instead w cubed equals minus 1. And what we do is we say, let w equals r e to the i theta, and see where that takes us. So if I substitute that in, I get r cubed e to the 3i theta equals minus 1, which equals e to the i pi, because minus 1 is e to the i pi. But it's not just e to the i pi. It could be e to the i 3 pi, or it could be e to the i 5 pi. Now, I know there's only three solutions, so I'm not going to write down more than three different alternatives. So now what I can do is equate the modulus and the argument on each side. So you'll see I get r cubed equals 1, which tells me that r equals 1. So that was the easy bit. And I also get 3 theta equals pi, or 3 pi, or 5 pi, which tells me that theta equals pi by 3, or pi or 5 pi by 3. Now, we might be interested to see where these solutions lie on an argon diagram. 
because these pictures can be quite useful, especially as the cube root of minus 1 is a common problem. First of all, the argument pi puts me on the negative real axis. There's a root there. The argument pi by 3 puts me up here, and the argument 5 pi by 3 puts me down here, because 5 pi by 3, you'll remember, is equivalent to minus pi by 3. So there you have it. There's where your three roots appear on an Argand diagram. Next question then. Find the square root of 4i. And the difference here is, of course, you're trying to find the square root of a complex number. But we don't do anything different from our normal technique. So first of all, we say this implies that I can write w squared equals 4i. So if the root of 4i equals w, then w squared equals 4i, and we're going to let w equal r e to the i, theta. So w squared is going to be r squared e to the 2i theta, and 4i can be written as 4 e to the i pi by 2. So we put the i into exponential form. Now it could also be 4e to the i pi by 2 plus 2 pi. And we've now got two distinct solutions. Now it should be fairly obvious by inspection, just looking at this, that r equals 2. And we've also got, if we equate angles, that 2 theta equals pi by 2, or pi by 2 plus 2 pi, and that gives you that theta equals pi by 4, or 5 pi by 4. So if we do an Argand diagram, just to look where these solutions are, you'll see you've got one solution up here, where that angle in there is pi by 4, and you've got one solution down here, where the angle was 5 pi by 4. So you see, they're exactly opposite each other. Final one, then. Find the fifth root of 243 times 1 plus i over root 2. And again, we'll use the same technique as ever. Let the solution be something like z. So these two together imply that z to the power 5 equals 243 into 1 plus i over root 2. And as ever, we're going to let z equal something like r e to the i theta. So if I now substitute in z to the 5, I get r to the 5 e to the 5 i theta equals... Now, 243, for those who don't know it, is 3 to the power 5. So I'm just going to put that straight in. And 1 plus i over root 2 is e to the i pi by 4, just putting it into exponential form. But of course, there are other solutions possible. It could also have been 3 to the 5 e to the i pi by 4 plus 2 pi. Or it could have been 3 to the 5 e to the i pi by 4 plus 4 pi, and so on. I've not got space to write more solutions, but clearly I want five alternatives. So perhaps if I put that down there, I need five alternatives because we need five different roots. So now let's equate as ever. So if I write that, so we equate the modulus and the argument on each side of the equation. Now, the first bit's obvious. You can see that r equals 3. That's the easy bit. And for the angle, you get 5 theta equals pi by 4, or pi by 4 plus 2 pi, or pi by 4 plus 4 pi, and so on. I'm not going to write them all, because I need a bit of space left on the screen. So if I then divide through by 5, I get theta equals pi by 20, or pi by 20 plus 2 pi over 5, or pi by 20 plus 4 pi over 5, 
and so on. And finally, we're going to put these in an argon diagram just to see what they look like. I can just about squeeze it in down here. You'll notice the first solution had an angle, I'll put it down here, of pi by 20. So we'll stick there's a pi by 20 in there. The second solution, we added 2 pi by 5. And if you check, you'll find that brings you somewhere around here. The third solution, pi by 20 plus 4 pi by 5. And again, you might not be able to do that uh, immediately, but you'll find it's going to be somewhere like this. Next solution would be pi by 20 plus 6 pi by 5, and that will take you around there, and then you'll have another one round here. And so what you will see is that all five solutions are separated, and for each of them, of course, the angle between the solutions is 2 pi by 5. So in conclusions, this video has given a number of worked examples in complex numbers. The focus has been on exercises and core skills. Next, the real challenge for you as a student is you need confidence in how and where to use these skills in real problem solving, because that's the main reason for learning them.